Hello everyone, and welcome back to Real Time, where we talk about the movies we like. And the ones we don't. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. And today we are doing uh, the, our list of, our, of what we think are the best and worst dads in fiction. We did the same for the moms, now we're going to do it's the same thing for the dads. Time for the dads. Yeah. So we're going to go by generally the same criteria we, we judge the moms by. Being a good parent, being a good person... Computer is warning us about a uh, virus and threat protection. That's okay. And um, what did I say? Good parent, good person, and you know, good husband too. Yeah. On mm -hmm. top of that. Now, my own dad and I had a uh, strange relationship growing up. Uh, I was a little turd, and he was very mad. But as as I grew up, I realized that. You know, he he was just doing the, the best he could for me, and um, honestly, I'm grateful he that he didn't whoop my ass more than I deserved. <laughs> you know, uh, he's my stepdad. I call him my dad because, duh, he's been he's been around for the past more than twenty years. So yeah, that's my dad. All right. So Tyler, are we gonna start with the best dads first? We are gonna start with the best dads first. All right. And our first pick is one that you're going to know more about than me, so I'll let you take the wheel on this. All right. Bob Belcher from Bob's Burgers. All right. So Bob Belcher is a very good dad. He, um, it's very obvious that he loves his kids. Uh, he loves his wife. Um, he's always doing goofy stuff with his kids. Um, he's always showing that he cares for them, and he just wants to give them the best life that he can while being a restaurant owner and um, trying to keep that open too yeah mm -hmm. he has a busy life but uh you could tell that he is a uh, very fulfilled with just what he has yeah it's uh i'm not the biggest fan of bob's burgers i mean honestly it's kind of growing on me a little bit but mm -hmm. i will make you love it <laughs> but bob and even when i'm you know really not a fan of it is still the one character on the show that I can, you know, grasp onto and be like, okay, you you are the only one who's sane in all this craziness, <laughs> so I can relate to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a good guy. He's a he's a really good dad, I believe. All right, next I'll let you to do. do uh, I'll let you talk about this next guy too. Okay. Danny Tanner from Full House. All right. I'll just yeah, oh, just keep, okay. going, keep going. Um, so Danny Tanner, uh, it's been forever since I've seen Full House. Um, however, I remember when I would watch this show, Danny Tanner was um a single father, sort of. I mean, he has his his wife just died. Yeah, but his uh, he has his best friend and his brother in law helping him take care of the kids. Yeah, um, his three daughters. Um, so he's doing the best he can, um, and again, it's very clear that he loves his daughters, he wants them to grow up and live their best lives that they can, um, he's always, you know, dropping life lessons, I life, guess, life, yeah, every episode. Life lessons and little nuggets of wisdom mm -hmm. every now and again. Yeah. And, okay, we get it. We, we'll, we'll, we'll update. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And... I'm not. I'm. I'm also not the biggest fan of this show, but I can still admit that Danny Tanner's a good dad. Mm -hmm. And yeah. of course, rest in peace, Bob Saget. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next on our good dads list is Gomez Adams. We talked about his wife Morticia in, in, in the best mom. So mm -hmm. here we are with him. Yep. Gomez is. We're gonna use probably. Uh, a lot of the same language to describe him as we did uh, Morticia. He's a very supportive, a very loyal partner. Mm -hmm. He's very open to whatever his kids are are on about. If uh, they decide that they want to be normal, then he's going to be a little confused about it, but he's all for it. He's yep. because as long as it's whatever they want, you know, if they're, if they're making this choice consciously, then he's open with it even if it's not not something he yeah. likes yeah he sends him to summer camp even though 
uh, he doesn't understand it, but he believes that that's what they want at yeah. the time. And and in the '60s show, when Pugsley is when he decides that he wants to be a like a Boy Scout, he goes along with it because mm-hmm. it seems like it's making Pugsley happy, so he's fine with it. Mm-hmm. And. Really, anything you could say about Morticia, you can say about Gomez. Yeah. They're just probably the perfect couple. Mm -hmm. Perfect couple, good parents. Yeah. Next we have Hank Hill from King of the Hill. Now, Hank is a a classic middle America dad. He's a old school conservative in uh, in his beliefs and in his manners and he sells propane and propane accessories mm-hmm. and he doesn't quite understand his son like at all uh, some of the first things we hear him say about Bobby is that boy ain't right <laughs> I tell you what <laughs> and he, even though Bobby may not be right to him he's He's still going to do his best to give him the life that he he deserves and needs, which is especially uh, impressive considering that Hank's own father, Cotton, was so bad, was really (laughs) awful. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be on our worst list, but, you know, he came close. He really did. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, even though sometimes Bobby does things that Hank doesn't like and, (laughs) oh, excuse me, Hank tries to... Make him, Change it. Make him more into him. Yeah. Um, but still. At, at the end of the he, day, that's his boy. Yeah, he's he's going to take care of Bobby. And uh, he's definitely a much better parent than Peggy is. Yeah. Miss Peggy, jealous of her own son uh, cooking Thanksgiving dinner, so she runs away and steals the, the turkey to give to someone else hill. Yeah. That Peggy hill. Yeah. And Hank is probably the best parent we see on the regular on king of the hill <laughs> probably yeah like not a whole lot come close uh i'd say maybe dale surprisingly <laughs> he's a good dad to joseph yeah yeah uh he's not a really good person but he's a mm, good dad he is a good dad and this is and that and that's assuming he doesn't realize that joseph isn't his but you know what Whatever. As, yeah. as far as he concern, he's concerned, uh, Joseph is his. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, who's next? Next, our last pick for Good Dads is Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. All right, why don't you tell us about Uncle Phil since I don't watch the show. Okay, so Uncle Phil was... Now, he used to be a, uh, a social activist back during the Civil Rights era. He... Uh, he went to Malcolm X speeches and l- listened to him t- uh, talk. He later became a lawyer and then later on in the show, a judge. And not only is he uh, a good father to his own kids, providing a much needed sense of grounding and stability that these rich kids really need. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he doesn't always succeed as we see with Hillary, but he's, he, he's a son Car- Carlton's Superman basically and he's always there for when he his kids need him but he's also a a much needed father figure to to, to will now will's father left him wh- when he was really young and we see him come back in one episode that makes everyone cry and where we see that will's dad is a really awful person and Phil reads him the riot act basically tells him that look if you're gonna walk out of that door just stay gone actually no that wasn't Phil who who said that that was that was Aunt Viv but you know what Phil probably uh, agreed with that sentiment too Mm -hmm. and it's because of Uncle Phil that Will becomes a much better person than he was at the beginning of the show and it's really beautiful to see this this found father figure become Will's dad for more or less, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the show, uh, uh, Will Phil even tells Will that you know he's his son. Mm-hmm. And uh, at, in the in the last episode where when um, 
you know, everyone's going their separate ways. Uh, Phil and, and Viv are moving to the East Coast, and everyone's just leaving because they just sold the house to uh, someone. I forgot who. But Phil's telling all all his uh, all his kids to you know call them on call him on Sundays, and then he, then he turns to Will and says Sunday. <laughs> ah, it's great. I, I I love Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and honestly, I want to do a whole huge retrospective on this show one of these days for this channel. Probably not going to happen, but I want to do it. <laughs> so that is going to wrap up the good dads but we have two instances of dads who um i really wanted to mention but, but they're not quite good enough <laughs> and they're not quite Bad. too horrible yeah our first our first one here is tobias funke from arrested development look this man tries his hardest okay he is not a very smart person <laughs> yeah he he's not the brightest he's always making accidental homoerotic references mm -hmm. and they and they are accidental yeah. he's just very silly yeah but we we could see that he is legitimately trying to, to do what he can for maybe and he even also provides some decent guidance whenever it's convenient for him mm -hmm. to uh george michael yeah yeah, he's not like like everyone on the show. He's kind of an idiot. Yeah, not, not the best person. But you know? he's one of the least bad intentioned people on the show. Yeah, yeah. You know, him and George Michael, mm -hmm. just those two in in this whole messed up family. And even then, there there are sometimes when when Tobias is has bad intentions, but they're they're not nearly as present as they are with everyone else. Like mm -hmm. for instance, Lucille yeah. or, um, why am I blanking on the dad's name? It's just George, George, Michael. George. Oh, it's just George. Yeah, yeah. George. So yeah, not as bad as he could be, but still could be better. Mm -hmm. And another one who I had on the worst list until I remembered some very key details about him. Omni man from invincible. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go out of my way and say that this man is a good father. He's not. Yeah. He, he, is, he beats up his son. That's not very good. That's the least of it. Yeah. <laughs> like. That's putting it very lightly. Th this man uh, commits genocide on the on the bootleg Justice League of his earth to clear the way for the Viltrumite invasion. And tries to convince his son that, you know, this is what earth needs and that his, his mother is just a pet. Probably the wrong thing to say to to um, to Mark, but you know whatever. Mm -hmm. And he, well, well, there's no way to uh, get around it. He he beats the absolute crap out of him all across the globe. Yeah, like it it, it gets pretty intense. Mm -hmm. You know the yeah, the sh the show really expanded on it. This this beatdown that was in the comics. <sighs> Not. I would hate to be Mark in that situation. But there's one key element that keeps him off of the bad list, for me at least. Or off the worst list, that, that is. When the time came to, for him to actually finish Mark, to actually kill him, he couldn't do it. You know? Try as he may to tr convince himself that he... That all of his time on earth meant absolutely nothing to him it did you know mm -hmm. it you know because tries he might to say that that he doesn't care about any of this mark is still his son and he still has some sort of affection for debbie like yeah he said that she's just a pet to him but most people love their pets yeah mm -hmm. and and Nolan spends a good amount of time trying to convince Mark that Earth isn't worth saving, but and he even asks him what he'll have after five hundred years, since you know as as Viltrumites they'll live for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. At at a minimum, Nolan himself is around a thousand years old. 
you know, what will Mark have after 500 years? And Mark just says that he'll still have him, which makes him absolutely snap and leave Earth, becoming the first Viltrumite to ever abandon their post. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Nolan is not a good dad at all, but he's not the worst, you know. And we'll see on the show later on that there are much worse Viltrumites than, than Nolan. Mm-hmm. But all right, let's go on to the worst dads. Okay, I'm gonna work backwards from this list because uh, I have the worst of the worst at the very top here because uh, mm-hmm. there was no way I was leaving this guy off. Mm-hmm. So let's work backwards. Okay. We have uh, a t- a two way tie for this first slot: Joseph Sugarman and Butterscotch Horseman from BoJack Horseman. Mm-hmm. Now. Let's start with Butterscotch, because there's not a whole lot... There's not as much of him as there is with Joseph. Butterscotch is as bad of a parent as Beatrice was to Bojack. Okay? Every failure he had experienced in life, he would take out on his son. Now, mind you, he didn't have quite the animosity that Beatrice had for him, but still, he was not very nice to to Bojack. No. At one point, Bojack caught him in an affair with her, with his secretary, and what does what does Butterscotch do? Gives him a, a drink to to make him forget about this instance. Mm. And at one point, this narcissistic horse, uh, when when he had to go pick up uh, Bojack from what was it soccer practice or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he makes himself out to be. The, the victim in all this because not only because he had to pick up Bojack but he also had to make his own sandwich he also had to do some things for himself for once in his life or I, don't, I shouldn't say once in his life because he was poor at one point so mm. there there was that but yeah and just overall making his uh, wife Beatrice who again not a good mother at all <laughs> make her seem crazy for wanting to leave the house and have feelings yeah yeah not a very good husband not a very good uh father and honestly bojack really wasn't all that plus by his death i mean the the man so he, he'd been trying to publish his novel for all his life mm-hmm. and once he finally did and it, and it got a bad review he challenged that person to a duel you know like with pistols walking 10 paces apart mm-hmm. and he didn't die in the duel. He tripped and bashed his own head in. <laughs> like at that point, Bojack wasn't even surprised. Like how it happened, mm-hmm. and I don't think he's really too broken up about it either. Now on to Joseph. This is the man who put in motion all of the trauma that would that would besiege the, the Horseman family through the next half century and more honestly yeah he was the one who got his wife a lobotomy after their son cracker jack died he was the one who who uh, who uh traumatized be not yeah yes yeah. beatrice with mm-hmm. with burning all her stuff after she had scarlet fever which i mean honestly you do got to do that but you don't yeah. need to burn all her stuff right in front of her that's just needlessly callous yeah. And he was the one who made it, who created a, a home life that was so hostile that Beatrice was willing to hook up with the first scoundrel she met and run off with him after she got knocked up. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's, it's all because of this man that every bad thing in Bojack's life happens to him through his own actions. Now, some things you just can't account for, like for instance like any of the stuff that happened on horsing around that's not that's that's out of uh, of Joseph's control true but all of the trauma that Bojack ended up going through from his own family came from this man mm-hmm. he's the reason why we have this show and he's the reason why things happen the way they do yeah. I could say more but I don't need to no, the yeah. show does quite enough and this man only appears in like three episodes. Yeah, it's not very many. 
Yeah. All right. Well, who's next? Next is Stephen Stodge from South Park. Like we said about uh, his wife, Mary, in the mom's video, this man is absolutely horrible and abusive to butters. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, he didn't try to kill him initially, but he sure didn't... He sure didn't help matters. No, yeah, definitely not. You know, after he got caught hooking up with men in gay bars and theaters, he decides to just go along with his wife's lie because it's easier than facing up to the truth. Now, to be fair, he did later come clean about the whole thing, but still, that doesn't really do anything because even removing this aspect from him, he's still a horrible father. Yeah, he is. To the point where when Butters was, when he when he thought he was in a simulation, he went to his own house just to punch his dad in the nuts. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. And he even had his son sent to gay conversion camp when he thought Butters was a little bit bi-curious. Even though Stephen is a little bit bi-curious. Yeah. <laughs> more, more than, than a little. More little. than curious. More yeah. than a little. <laughs> you know, this, this man... Like, there are very few good parents on South Park. Yeah, that's true. I think Token has good parents. That might be it. Maybe, yeah. But, and like, unironically good. Not just, you know, not, not whatever everyone else is doing. Mm. That That's that's the criteria I'm, I'm judging these people on. So yeah, Steven is not the only bad parent in South Park. But he's... He's one of the worst. He's one of yeah. the worst. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who's worse, him or his wife. Because they're both very much up there. Yeah. All right, who's next? Uh, next we have Denethor from The Lord of the Rings. Now, I've heard... I haven't read Return of the King. I want to. I really need to. But I haven't read it. But I've heard he's better in the books than he is in the movies. So we're only going to be focusing on the movies here. A pretty good uh, indicator of uh, being a, a pretty bad parent is one, openly favoring one child over the other. Yeah, okay? that's, that's pretty bad, yeah. That, that, that's some shady behavior. But, mm -hmm. you know, Denethor decides he wants to take it another step further and, you know, openly tell the other one that that he should that he should have died in his brother's place <laughs> uh, how do you how do you walk back from that yeah how yeah <laughs> and on top of that he's a really terrible leader of, of gondor okay when the city was getting was, was under siege by uh, by by the orcs this man just basically said run go away leave abandon and it took G gandalf beating him with his stick to to get these people's uh, senses back yeah like, this man would not call for aid for Gondor, even though he knew that he needed it. He was just in denial about the whole thing because he wanted to keep power. He didn't want, um, he didn't want Aragorn coming back to claiming his rightful throne. He didn't want Isildur's heir back. He didn't care. He just, he was just concerned about his, his own power and success that nothing else mattered to him. Mm -hmm. You know, do you have anything to say about Denethor? Because I feel like... I'm, I'm saying a lot. You are saying a lot, but that's just because it's been a while since I've seen Lord of the Rings. And he, he really... And I barely even remember who it is. <laughs> he, he really only features in Return of the King. He yeah. does appear in the Two Towers in, like, um, in the extended cut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and Boromir even tells him, hey, Faramir des deserves love too. What the heck, man? <laughs> like, when when even your your favorite child is telling you that you're kind of a bad father. You're you're really yeah, a bad you father. Are, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, buddy. What's next? Next, um, next is Zeus from Greek mythology. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, do you want to take this one? Sure, I'll try my best. Okay. Well, uh, the thing is, Zeus has a lot of children with a lot of different ladies. Yeah. Um, and. He probably doesn't really give a crap about any of them. Not really, no. <laughs> he has a lot of chances to be a 
a dad, but yet... Um, he says nah. Nah, he just doesn't do that. This man has more baby mamas than Nick Cannon. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's been a while, and, but and every jump in. Every time, like, you know, one of his a half-god, demigod children, mm-hmm. you know, does something or another, Hera always gets pissed and causes something bad to happen to them, or just mm-hmm. the people of earth in general and what does zeus do nothing 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 he, he thinks don't care. he thinks it's kind of funny yeah like when 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 heracles was uh who mind you was was named after hera in honor of her didn't matter she was she still didn't like him yeah although to be fair can you really blame her for being up uh, being uh all pissy at at zeus's infidelity not really can't mm-hmm. really blame her for that yeah. mm-hmm. can't can't really at all but that's not the kid's fault no. Anyways, um, where was I? Heracles. Right. <laughs> so, um, the reason why Heracles did his, you know, the 12 labors was because Hera tricked him into killing his wife, Megara, and their kids. And Her- Heracles wanted to seek redemption for this. So he did all these things to, you know, to redeem himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zeus, lots of lots of baby mamas, really should <laughs> learn to pull out. Yeah, Just really should. Half of all Greek uh, mythology stories would have not existed if Zeus did not stick his dick in someone. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Yeah. Okay, now, right. the worst out of all of these is Fire Lord Ozai from Avatar. All right. Let's start with the light things first, just okay. so we can uh, build up to this. Sure, yeah. So, Ozai, uh, well, this this first little bit isn't actually Ozai's doing. It was uh, his father, Azulon. He wanted to create a uh, stronger fire-bending uh, dynasty, so he matched Ozai with, with a descend- up with a descendant of the previous Avatar, Avatar Roku, which was uh, Ursa who would become Zuko and Azula's mother. Um, but as soon as they got married, Ozai basically said to her, now, you're going to want to say uh, goodbye to your parents because you're never seeing them again because uh, you're mine now, mm. basically. And, you know, Ursa was, of course, pr- very put out by this. Yeah. So she made Ozai think that... Uh, you know, after their son Zuko was born, that Ozai wasn't the father that her uh, her last boyfriend Ikem was. Mm. He wasn't. He Zuko is Ozai's son. And this basically made Ozai decide to treat uh, Zuko very terribly. Mm-hmm. Now let's fast forward a bit to um, after Iroh, son Lu Ten died. Ozai tried to take the throne, and. Uh, Azulon told him, okay, uh, well, as for punishment for this, want, you want to do this, you got to kill Zuko. And uh, Ozai wasn't really p- too concerned by that. He just said, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. what's, what's Zuko to him? He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Now, this led, of course, to Ursa assassinating Fire Lord Azulon and putting Ozai on the throne. Very bad idea in hindsight. Yeah. Let's fast forward a little bit more. Uh, when Zuko is in, was let into the war room by Iroh, and he spoke out against a general's plan to sacrifice, you know, a whole battalion of new fire troops. Uh, this was a uh, an offense against the against Fire Lord Ozai because he was in his war room. Mm-hmm. So when Zuko saw that at the Agni Kai, and you know he didn't want to fight his own father. Ozai decided he was going to make an example of him and burned half his face off and told him, go get the Avatar and you can come back. Yeah. You know, you, you, you've, you've lost your honor. You, you're being banished. Get out. Mm. More or less. Yeah. And we don't see a whole lot of Ozai in this show proper. Like, we only really see his face in the third season. But we've been... It's it, this this guy has been built up the whole series behind the scenes, so that to the or at the point where okay, what's so special about this guy? 
And we realize he's a real evil guy. A real bad guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a nice guy. Like, after after Zuko is, um, she, he's given credit for killing the Avatar and allowed back to, back home. He's, you know, he's allowed back in the war room, of course. And um, Ozai is trying to figure out what to do with the remaining Earth Kingdom because they've already ca- taken Ba Sing Se. Mm-hmm. And he asks Zuko what 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 he thinks of the Earth Kingdom since he he spent a good time living amongst them. And when Zuko tells him that they're not going to give up easy, you know, they, you know, it's not going it, to. They're they're a very strong and proud people that will not be pushed down so easily. Mm-hmm. And then Azula gives him the idea to burn the whole nation down. <laughs> and on the day of Black Sun, now this is now. It, Ozai wanting to burn the whole Earth Kingdom down is what made Zuko realize, okay, yeah, I, I made the wrong choice back in Bossing Say. I should not have betrayed Uncle Iroh. Yeah. He, you know, he, he switches sides and he tells Ozai this. And Ozai tries to kill him the first instance he gets. Mm. You know, it's, it's the genocide. It's the child abuse. It's all that that really makes Ozai... The worst father in <laughs> yeah, all of fiction. Yeah, not a good one. And we see him in the comics after the show ends, after Aang's taken away his bending. He's trying to manipulate Zuko into becoming the the Fire Lord he thinks he should be. Mm-hmm. And he even uh, manipulates Azula against Zuko, which, to be honest, was not that hard. Yeah, no. And and, and he even. Uh, decides that when Ursa comes back to the Fire Nation, that he's going to twist the knife just just a bit to make it make it hurt more when she comes to see her, him, whatever. You know, and it's because of this and all of that, his abuse of her over the years that makes made her so scared to be even back at the palace. Mm-hmm. It's all of that that really makes Ozai the worst. Mm-hmm. The absolute worst father in all of fiction. And I will stand by that. <laughs> now, granted, there's some things that we haven't seen, so maybe there is a worse yeah. one out there. Like Shao Tucker, for instance. But I haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist. I just know what he's done. I'm going to still stand by Ozai, though. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand by that. So, right. that'll do it for us. Mm-hmm. Happy Father's Day. See you next time.